and yes successfully we are in the end of the chapter but towards the end we have much more important things so now we have to finish only three chap concepts one is translation human genome project and then the expression of gene lag operon so once we finish all these three we have successfully completed the chapter molecular genetics or molecular basis of inheritance hope this chapter is much useful for you all and yes we'll move on to the chapter so first what is translation now a dna is replicated rnas codons the coding sequences is been added and now only one particular process is been pending so that process is called translation where proteins are formed now how a protein is been formed the amino acid so the amino acid chain or a strand will eventually form the polypeptide chain which is protein and yes that is called as translation and now this translation you can also call as the process of polymerization of amino acid which means that the formation of amino acid how a single amino acid is formed with the help of these codons so last class i told you right the different codons the triplet codes so with the help of these codes the rna specifically t transcription rna will start coding and coding for different amino acids and that's how a, a big polypeptide change chain is been formed so that is all about translation and now what exactly happens in trans uh, um, translation the first you have mrna which is a messenger rna and now this messenger rna has different base pairs all right and now there has to be the complementary base pairs added for all these triplets for these codons and who does this work tRNA transcription RNA will do this work and now every time the transcription RNA will add the complementary sequence each of the amino acid is been formed and this whole translation process happens in the ribosome of the cell fine and now what happens for example now there is a code GUU and now what is the con the complementary sequence it is C double A and now this will code for valine so in the same way methionine tryptophan phenylalanine the different amino acid chain will be formed and that is the process of polymerization of amino acid it is a very simple concept which happens in a ribosome fine and ribosome has subunits it has a bigger subunit and a smaller subunit that which you can call it as 70s 30s there are different subunits in ribosome and that yes will stand for swedberg unit fine and now we will talk about the expression of gene how a gene has been expressed a gene will have both positive side and the negative side it could either suppress or it could either express fine so express meaning it will start finding its own way if it is suppression it will stop its way so that is called as gene expression a typical example for this gene expression is lac operon so lac operon in that lac stands for lactose and operon stands for the structural gene which code for rna and trna and this rrna and trna will eventually help in the formation of amino acid which is protein synthesis okay and now this translation is also called as protein synthesis and now what happens is that we will take an example of a classic example of e coli escherichia coli and now what happens this e coli has three important gene lac z gene lac y gene and lac a gene lac z gene will code for beta galactosidase and y will code for permease 
and T will code for and A will code for trans acetylase. So now all these are enzymes. Fine. Now what is the work of each of these enzymes? For example, permease. This permease enzyme helps in the production of lactose. And this beta-galactosidase, what do they do? They help in breaking down lactose, which is hydrolysis of lactose. And what do these transacetylase enzyme do? They transfer the acetyl group from the acetyl CoA. So from the acetyl CoA, they transfer the acetyl group to the beta-galactosidase. So these are all the three different genes. And what do they code? These enzymes. So now we spoke about what is gene expression, what is this operon model and in E. coli. Now with all these three types of gene and each of these gene having coding for the enzyme, what exactly happens in the E. coli? Now what happens when E. coli utilizes, there are two situations. One, E. coli is utilizing glucose as its energy and the next thing, E. coli utilizing lactose as its energy. Now, E. coli when it uses glucose as its energy, now there is a repressor protein. This will go bind to the operator and translation will not take place. So, the, the whole of the process has been suppressed because glucose is its energy source. But at the same time, when lactose is its energy source, what will happen? The repressor protein will become inactive. It will not, it will not start to suppress the process. Normal transcription will take place. So if glucose is its energy source, there is suppression. If lactose is its energy source, there is no suppression. So that is lac operon and all its genes. And now we will talk about human genome project. So in the year 1990s, that's the 20th century. So people, researchers want to sequence whole of the genome of a individual. So they, they started doing this human genome project. And this human genome project, it was like such a wealthy project. It actually required nearly 30,000 million dollars can you even imagine how much did it cost so that's how so what was their major goal is to identify all the gene all the base pairs which is present in an individual and do you think is it a much simpler process no i think in all the research work which is taking place in biology this human genome project is one of the most toughest thing to do because when you, when you stretch your gene or a DNA, you have to just imagine how many base pairs does it have. So you have 3 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs. So, so many base pairs you have. And now, how did they sequence all these base pairs with the help of bacterial chromosome and yeast chromosome. So once when you find these repetitive sequences of a DNA and when you impropagate into these bacterial back or yak, so in case of plasmids, what exactly happens? They will start its own replication process. Now the DNA has been replicated, right? So that's how this human genome project was framed. And what were their findings? So there were many findings in that you have top foremost important findings. The first, they had 316.47 million base pairs. And next, less than 2% of genome, they coded for proteins. So just 2% or much more less than 2%, they coded for proteins. And now in the whole of the DNA, they found much of repetitive sequences. For example, if it is ATCG and it is one more ATCG, ATCG is repetitive sequences in the DNA. That's why they, they say that DNA is such a big molecule. Fine. And next, while they come sequence all these chromosomes, 23 chromosomes, the first chromosome had a greater gene and when they compared with Y chromosome which is present in males. So the first chromosome had 2968 genes, right? And But the Y chromosome had just 231 genes. So these were their four important findings. 
and now we will talk about DNA fingerprinting. So DNA fingerprinting is a much important technique in forensic science to find who is the murderer. Now what do they do? They take all the evidences, the blood sample, nail sample, hair, one of the hair strands. So all with all these samples, what do they do? They amplify the DNA and find the specific sequence and they check whether this sequence is matching with the uh, murderer sequence or anybody who accused sequence. Okay, so now we'll see what process happens in this DNA fingerprint. Now DNA is same for all but only the base pair differs it varies from individual to individual. Now you call it as variable number tandem repeats which means that as I told you before a specific uh, sequence will keep on repeating in the DNA and that you call it as variable number tandem repeats VNTR. And now what do you do with this exactly with the help of VNTR you find you, you do this DNA fingerprinting. Now you collect a sample, extract DNA from the sample and then you use all the restriction enzymes. And now how do you observe band? You do this gel electrophoresis to amplify, to specifically uh, separate these fragments and then you do blotting techniques. You have different types of blotting, right? Southern, Eastern, Western, S, wait. You have S N O W D R O P. Okay. Now southern blotting. Uh, there is no such thing called as eastern blotting. There is southern blotting, northern blotting, and western blotting. No eastern blotting. Fine. Now southern blotting will code. You can blot for DNA. Northern blotting. You can code for RNA and western blotting. So usually people will go for southern blotting to blot DNA because. You have isolated DNA, right? And now you attach a specific probe, which means a marker to identify the exact DNA fragment. And then it is packed with the X-ray film. And now this X-ray film is developed. And now what do you do? Now this X-ray film of the uh, specific incident, which uh, of the specific murdered place, you collect this DNA X-ray film. And now you match this with the other DNA samples of the accused and whichever matches he is the murderer he or she is the murderer so that is called as DNA fingerprinting so hope you like this chapter and you've understood every concept of this chapter and yes do support us so thank you all for your support and much of the love you show to me to and this is the greatest support for me to continue with all the chapters thank you once again